I'm about to tell you about why your partner may start withdrawing even when you two had the best times together when you just met. If you avoid these five mistakes, you may create emotional closeness and deepen your relationship. Tell me, have you ever been in a situation when you're dating, he seems really nice and is into you? You're having the time of your life. He's calling you, sending you sweet good morning texts, arranging dates, and as soon as you think you're getting closer and you start developing deeper emotional feelings for him, he stops pursuing you so gallantly. That right there is potential sign of an anxious avoidant trap. You talk with him, hoping to figure out if he's still interested in you. After all, you want to give him the way out if he's not interested, but he just reassures you that all is okay and he's just busy or tired. Those are the most common explanations I've seen. However, not much changes. He's inconsistent. You still keep holding on to the hope that his old self from the time you met him will show up. And just when you start giving up on the relationship, this guy, just like a thirsty vampire, comes back and gives you a bit of hope by doing something nice and connecting with you. You wind up having great times, but then again, a part of you is anxious and wondering, will he stay consistent? Somehow, he always gives you just a little bit to keep you tied. Friend, this is a starvation diet. You deserve much more. No, you don't need a new hobby or focus on yourself. You are already busy. Don't let him or the society gaslight you to think that what you want is too much. You deserve consistent attention and appreciation. After all you're ready to provide the same. But there is a but. I see so many women making these five mistakes that bring them to this situation. This situation is called anxious avoidant trap. Don't worry, you can get out of this trap as soon as you stop making these five mistakes. The first is not understanding the underlying dynamics. At the core of the anxious avoidant trap lies a fundamental misunderstanding of each other's attachment styles. Anxious types often misinterpret an avoidance needs for space as a sign of disinterest, while avoidance might see the anxious partner's desire for closeness as overwhelming. Understanding the nuances of these styles is the first step to changing the dance. The result of this is that you take things personally and when you try to communicate your needs, you come off as attacking to your partner. The second mistake you make before winding up in a relationship actually leads you to an anxious avoidant trap. The problem is that many of you don't distinguish between dating and a relationship. A lot of women assume that they are in a relationship with someone who never necessarily asked them to be exclusive. If you're like most women I work with, you may think that you are the only one that he's seeing. This will cause you to quickly become more invested than he is. Although he may have great time with you, he may not be emotionally invested as you are even when he pursues you at the beginning. He needs to prove himself to you before you give him your heart. The next one is that you simply don't continue discerning in spite of seeing red flags or not getting what you need in a relationship. That means you should be evaluating if he's right for you, not trying to make it work when he's showing you some red flags. A lot of you just become preoccupied wondering what's up with him. Does he like you? And what can you do or say to turn this situation around? It's totally understandable that you act like this, especially if you have some elements of anxious attachment. This is simply how you learn to survive very early on. However, this kind of overfunctioning further perpetuates your partner's fears. This causes him to feel overwhelmed. Another mistake that a lot of women make that perpetuate the cycle of anxious avoidant trap is related to communication. A lot of women don't communicate their needs in a relationship. If you recognize yourself in this, it's totally understandable. We somehow internalize that our needs are too much. Perhaps we didn't get regular affection and care from our parents. Society also tells us that we shouldn't be needy. I'll tell you, you are not needy. You feel anxious and frantic when your completely natural needs are not met. Remember, you just want consistency and commitment. When you don't communicate your needs and desires, men feel confused and emotionally unsafe with you. 
when you are open about what you expect, you allow him to make his choice to be the man you need him to be. The next mistake happens when you continue a relationship with someone who doesn't make you happy. You basically sacrifice your happiness and rely on hope that things will change. You see his potential for love and live off these little moments that he gives you when things are good, when he feels that he needs to make it up to you and calm down the situation when you are tired of feeling neglected. But deep down, you always know these good times are temporary. You don't feel fulfilled. As a result, you wind up bitter and he feels resentful because he most likely feels that he has to calm the volatile situation. Basically, he's just reassured that he is right about not allowing himself to fall deeper in love with you. You don't want this kind of relationship, do you? When you become the queen of hearts, you learn that you are the biggest gift to one lucky person and that there are many men that would love to be with you. He needs to know that you know that. He needs to know that he's privileged that you choose him. What a lucky guy. <laughs> when you approach dating and relationships like this, you will see the big difference. This is exactly what we teach women in the course of true love. That's when you can have a calendar filled with dates so you never have to wonder what this one particular guy is thinking of you. If you want to learn more about what avoidant men need from you to be able to fall in love, watch this video.